Hey guys, I haven't done a photo related video in a while, so I'm just gonna do one here on the basics of exposure. I'm talking about shutter and aperture and all that other fun stuff. Basically, without light, you don't have an image, and there are a couple of factors that actually go into making an image and controlling the overall light output. Shutter, which is the actual mechanical sleeve that goes up and down or side to side, depending on the type of camera you have that controls the actual time, and then the aperture, which is the lens opening, which controls the amount that enters the camera. Between the both of them, which they will control both the, uh, you know, the overall outcome of how much the sensor receives in terms of the light it gets. So basically the way exposure works is your camera's uh, built-in meter is trying to see and average out the different tones to an 18% gray, basically. So if you have a highlight and shadow detail, for instance, if we have a scene like this, you know, you have the black of the camera, you have the green of the grass, and you have the blue of the water and the, and the sky. And each has its own uh, exposure value. The black's going to be darker, obviously, because it's absorbing more, more light and reflecting less, whereas the grass and the blue is probably going to be a little more. Now what the camera's meter tries to do is it averages it out to an 18% gray. A lot of times the old school photographers used to use what they call a gray card and this is basically uh, you know, nothing more than a gray card and it's uh, exactly 18 percent gray so the light falling on this card is going to be what, the way that the camera sees it the light meter works in the same way basically what it does is it tries to measure the light falling on the subject for instance uh, so we have that 125 f16 which comes to the other uh, uh, thing I wanted to mention is what they call the sunny F16 rule. So on a sunny day, you set your ISO to 100, or even 125 to be more exact, and then you can set your shutter speed to the same as your ISO, and then always have F16 as your aperture, and you know, you're going to always get perfectly exposed images at the F16 on a sunny day, hence the Sunny F16 rule. Okay, so one of the first things you want to do is set the ISO on your camera. Now your camera might be a little different from mine, but this is pretty much generally the way that most of the digital SLRs or the DSLRs work. So you go into the ISO mode here, and I have 100 set for my ISO. You can go all the way up 125, depending on the increments. Mine only goes up to 1600. There are some that'll go all the way up to 64, 3200. But once you get past the 800 mark, it starts to get grainy no matter what camera you get. Grainy meaning more noisy. So what I like to do is just set it for 100 if I can get away with it. But don't be afraid to set it to even 200, 400. You can get some pretty uh, useful, acceptable images at ISO 400. Even at 800 with some of the digital SLRs. But once you hit above 800, like 1000, you're going to... See, in this range here, you're going to get some noise. But if you have to get the shot, in my opinion, a noisy image or a grainy, grainy image is better than a blurry image. So go ahead and just crank that sucker up as much as you need. So, But if you can get away with it, the advantage of setting it to a lower ISO is twofold. One, it's going to be a tighter, you know, a tighter grain or pixel. You're not going to be as noisy. And the other thing is the colors tend to be a little more saturated. Your controls might look a little different from mine, but basically it's the same. You got the green setting, which is you know full program. Camera does all the decisions for you. And you get the P, which is a, it's a program, or a, you know, gives you a little more control. Allows you to you know lock in your ISO and all that. Still, you're letting the camera do its decisions. And you got TV, which basically means time value, and that's shutter priority. And what shutter priority does is it allows you to set the speed of the shutter and then the camera will select the aperture so if you're going to do fast action you want to set it to shutter priority or TV mode and then set a shutter speed of at least uh, you know 1 125 1 250 or higher 160 will probably you know, freeze just you know, somebody walking really slow 125 maybe like a slow jogger 250 maybe a runner and if you want you know, a little bit of blurring on the feet, you know, the slower shutter speed will allow that. If you want crystal clear, motion stopping action, you want to go at least 1000 or up. 
and then the next is the AV, which is the aperture value. And this is where you set the aperture with the lens opening, and then the camera will select the shutter. And you want to select this when you want to have control over the overall depth of field, or basically sharpness from near to far. And then of course we have manual override, or just the M, manual mode. This is where you both select both the shutter and the aperture. And what that does is that it allows you to have full control of how you want the image to look. You still use the meter to meter the light to give it the overall impression of what you want it to do. Okay, again, so the shutter is going to be the full numbers. Everything from bulb 30 seconds all the way to 1 8,000th of a second, even higher in some cameras. Um, here it's set at 125. The aperture is easy to determine because of the fact that it's going to have a decimal point. It goes anywhere from 1.2 all the way up to f32, f64, even sometimes higher. So the shutter is going to be on the left, aperture value is going to be on the right. The 999, that's just my film count. I'm using a high capacity compact flash card, which the camera doesn't recognize. It does in terms of uh, capacity, but it just doesn't display it since there's only three digits here. So, for, for example, if I can set the shutter to 100, you see the aperture moving to compensate. So as the shutter gets slower, the aperture gets smaller. So it's kind of like a scale. It has to balance it out to the 18% gray. And I go the other way, and as you can see, the number right here, the aperture is getting smaller. <clears throat> it's kind of a confusing terminology as well. It's smaller, bigger. 1.2 is a larger opening but it's a smaller number and f22 is a larger number but a smaller opening so it's kind of strange how they have that work so basically i'm in shutter priority mode and i'm just doing what's called a program shift now in the aperture priority mode exactly the same is happening here you got 5.6 selected and as i select the aperture the shutter will compensate for that so you got f4.0 So you can see the number changing here. This is the aperture and the shutter will change. What it's doing is trying to match and, and uh, equalize the overall exposure. Same idea. So it's kind of like a scale. If bigger the aperture, you know, in terms of this, I should know. Those numbers are kind of confusing. I'm going to say the smaller the opening, the more time it takes. The larger the opening, the less time it takes. So it's kind of like a scale. It's trying to average it out at the 18%. Now in the manual mode, you're able to control both shutter and aperture. So right here, you can see the left number changing, but the right number not. However, if you look at the meter here, this is the suggested exposure reading. It's telling me that to be accurately exposed at. So it's telling me 100 at f9.0. Now if I want to change the aperture, so I'm going 7, 6, 5. Now it's telling me to go the other way. If you go out of the range, it'll blink right here, telling you that's going to be overexposed. So what you want to do is come back down. Or in my case, I'm going to increase the shutter speed until the mark shows in the center here. So now it's showing a 500 at f4. Now if I wanted a smaller aperture, go ahead and turn the aperture wheel.